Good afternoon. I'm Cassie Henderson, and this is Dan Falahi, Annie Conde, Ryan Carey, and Annie Geller. And we're here today to talk to you about the Therapeutic Electromechanical Assistive Music Device, or as we more affectionately call it, the Team Device. Now, in order to understand our project, it's important to understand the clinical need that drove the entire design process. Cerebral palsy is a condition of the nervous system that significantly impairs an individual's ability to use their own muscles. It's often caused by abnormal brain development or brain injury before the age of three. One in 400 individuals worldwide have cerebral palsy. Now this condition so significantly impacts their motor condition that they're often confined, confined to uh, power wheelchairs and very limited motion of their hands and head. They are able to sometimes use the limited motion of their hands and head to hit large pressure sensorized buttons called ability switches to interact with their wheelchair as well as adapted technologies. Individuals with cerebral palsy often participate in music therapy. Music therapy has been shown to increase social and emotional skills as well as cognitive and motor development. But more importantly, it, uh, music therapy allows for self-expression. Individuals with CP aren't able to express themselves because of their limited motor abilities. Now Ryan's going to take it a little bit more into how our team device fits in. Thanks, Cassie. So there's clearly a lot of value in music therapy for students with cerebral palsy. However, as you can see from the schematic shown here, most of the technology is either prohibitively expensive or it has poor sound quality. For this reason, we wanted to fit the need for high quality sound in an affordable technology. That's where the team device comes in. So to do this, we set ourselves a few goals. Uh, these specific goals were first, to uh, develop a technology that plays physical instruments. We used the ukulele and the bongo drum for that. Second, we wanted our device to be intuitive and easy to use. Uh, so that's why we used the ability switch mentioned by Cassie, which uh, is familiar to both the music therapist and the students. Third, we wanted our device to be able to incorporate various rhythmic sounds. This is important for creativity, as mentioned by Cassie, which is a form of self-expression. So in order to do that, we have three ukuleles tuned to different chords, and then we also have different modalities of the drum with the damping mechanism. Dan will get into that later. Last, we wanted our device to be open source and reproducible. To do this, we wanted to disseminate the information through an online resource. So to achieve these specific goals, we had to collaborate with the HMS School for Children with Cerebral Palsy. This is a school located in West Philadelphia, and they have musical therapists there. One of the musical therapists we, loped ver we worked very intimately with, excuse me, intimately with uh, his name was Brad Biederman. So Dan is now going to talk about the specifics of our design. Thank you, Ryan. Um, as mentioned, um, our core technology really behind the team device really governed the ability for us to produce different sound outputs and ultimately meet this need for um, this need in the marketplace for something that has good sound and is affordable. So please, uh, please refer to my model over here on the right, um, <laughs> Andy, who will be demonstrating some of the uh, different um, different components of our device. The first input is the ability switch, um, which is really the way in which the student is able to interact with our device. So the ability switch input. Um, feeds into the Arduino microcontroller that's located in our control boxes as shown here. This then interacts with the software that we've developed over the course of the year um, to then uh, talk to our servo motor, which produces circular motion. Um, it is really the, the core technology behind our device. This then interacts with the four bar mechanism that allows for the circular motion to be converted to translational motion, which is very important to then produce uh, drumming in the in the in terms of the bongo device, and strumming in terms of the, the, the ukulele. So, uh, in terms of our mechatronic de design, I mentioned our four-bar linkage mechanism, and this was really the most important part of our design um, in order to really take the rotational motion of the servo and apply it in a way to produce natural sound um, outputs in terms of the actual music instruments shown. So. As you can see with the video um, illustration here. Okay, well, 
Um, that actually will rotate circularly to allow for translational motion. That'll uh, allow for drumming in terms of the bongos and strumming in terms of ukulele. Next, what was really important is that we had multiple sound outputs so we could accurately mimic the experience of actually playing a physical instrument. Uh, we were able to do this using a control box as shown in this picture here. The control box utilizes a number of different switches that allows the um, music therapist to seamlessly interact with the instrument and allow for the, the child to produce multiple sound outputs. Um, so three different chords um, in terms of, via the three different ukuleles and then damped and undamped sound in terms of the bongo drums. And now I'm actually going to pass it on to Annie, who's going to walk you through a demonstration of our device. Thanks, Dan. So um, we wanted to show you something that was really important for us, was to show you how our device actually worked within the scope of a music therapy session. For this, we went to the HMS school and had an impromptu music uh, therapy session with the, with the music therapist there. In the first part of this video, you'll be able to observe both the ukulele team device as well as the bongo team device working in unison uh, to make a quick arrangement of a song that we learned that same morning that the students enjoy. Uh, you'll also be able to see the music therapist uh, understanding how the team device works extremely easily. that we use 
we have the product number and the uh, website that you can get it from. So it's very easy to just um, go there instead of looking all over the place for these different components. The final aspect of this is we took all of the components from our device, we put it into SolidWorks, and we created engineering drawings. So as you can see here, it takes apart every single one of our devices. So a person that's trying to reproduce this can see how every nut, bolt, and screw fit into the design process, making it very easy to reproduce them. All right, so now that you understand our website and the device itself, let's talk about future recommendations for the device. The first recommendation that we have that we really like to focus on is adapting this for different skill levels. So as you saw, we currently have one ability switch that relates to the ukuleles and one that, you, that relates to the drum. However, for a student that's perhaps a little bit more advanced, we'd like to take perhaps three ability switches and interface them with the ukuleles, so each one would independently control each of the, each of the ukuleles, thus providing for a bit of a more high-level learning experience. Next, we'd like to enhance the website. So as we've already told you, we think it's very clear and easy to use. But another thing that we'd like to do through this website is create a sort of forum. So we're looking to have an interface between us and the music therapist so we can better understand their needs in terms of, in terms of music therapy and then integrate this with our product itself moving forward. Finally, as you may have heard um, when we did our demo, there's a small bit of residual sound that's produced from the servo motors that we have up here. Uh, so we're looking to uh, decrease that sound a little bit without driving up the cost of our actual uh, device. All right. So in concluding remarks, on our last trip to the HMS school, uh, our music therapist, Brad Biederman, he pulled us aside and he said, I'm just so impressed with your device. The children are paying attention to this device more so than they do with the devices that we use currently. Um, he concluded by saying that he thinks it's a very powerful tool for music therapy which uh, that's, that's a really encouraging thing to hear on our last trip there. Um, so I'd just like to conclude by thanking all of the people that made this possible for us, uh, Dr. Bogan, Dr. Riff, Dr. Wigglesteen, um, just everyone in Penn Engineering, and also all of our friends that came out to support us today and means the world to us. Um, so with that, we'll open up to any questions. Thank you so much for your time.